There's a shack in the backwoods of Oregon where I experienced unspeakable evil and indescribable good. My name is Mac and I have a story to tell. Four years ago I took Kate, Josh, and Missy, our three youngest, for an end of the summer camping trip to Northeast Oregon while my wife Nan attended a class in Seattle. Our week was filled with hikes, swimming, meeting new friends, and sharing stories around the campfire. The last morning of the trip, Kate and Josh took a quick canoe ride while Missy colored at the picnic table near the campsite. My lifeguarding skills kicked in when I heard terrified screaming from the lake. I was able to flip the canoe and free Josh who'd been pinned under water. We had him breathing again within moments of reaching the shore. With great relief, we all walked back to the campsite. Missy was gone when we got there, so we figured she must be with new friends. When we found out no one had seen her, though, we began searching frantically. Someone did, however, remember seeing a green truck. Looking more closely at the page she was coloring, we found a ladybug pin. I told the detective on the phone there were five spots on the ladybug, and she whispered words that I'll never forget the little lady killer's fifth victim. A piece of Missy's dress and a blood stain on the floor of a remote shack in the woods told the story none of us could bear to hear. Like the previous four victims, we did not find her body. All the color went out of my life that day. The period I called the great sadness began. I blamed myself for not protecting her. I blamed God for not saving her. Nightmares haunted me every night, and I would hear her cries, almost get there on time, but she'd be gone, and I would be inconsolable. My wife Nan's faith helped her move forward. Me? When I was 13, I ran away from my father, who'd beaten me all my life, and worked my way around the world for several years. I even went to a seminary in Australia trying to make sense of my life. There I learned to use God's name but not hear his voice. Nan calls God Papa and talks to him constantly. I yell at him but I get no response until the letter. In my mailbox, a single envelope, no stamp, no postmark, no return address. It said, Mackenzie, it's been a while. I've missed you. I'll be at the shack this weekend if you want to get together. Papa. Papa? What? Stunned, I slipped on the icy pavement and crawled into the house where no one was home. Was this a cruel joke? A trap? A hoax? Who should I tell? Nan? the police? I realized I had to go alone. I drove to the shack and walked up the snowy trail. I even had a gun just in case. One side of me ached to meet that killer and give him his due. On the other hand, was I really about to see God face to face? I realized Nan's image of Papa didn't work for me. What would I see? As I approached, I noticed changes. The weather was warmer. Flowers were blooming. The shack was more like a cabin. Well, I did meet God face to face, and she appeared just the way I needed to see her. I also met Jesus and Sarayu, the Holy Spirit. From sunup to sundown in the cabin, I learned about being in relationship with God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Infinite life, truth, and love. I cried. I yelled. I questioned. I learned. I healed. Now, I know Papa. Share my journey in The Shack by William P. Young.